Hello, how's it going? Wanted to do a video on plumbing an espresso machine. So in this video, I'm gonna show you how I'm plumbing my espresso machine. I will start right off by saying I'm not a professional plumber. Um, use this to your, uh, your own uh, discretion here. So uh, let me show you the espresso machine that we bought. So without further ado, da -da 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 -da. there it is. My espresso machine. No, this isn't actually it. Uh, this is a mock-up that I made in order to make sure stuff would fit. So before I bought an expensive espresso machine online, I went and I cut one out of cardboard. I used a really cool 3D software that they had. Um, the company we ended up buying from, again, I didn't get any money from them, uh, but Whole Latte Love uh, had this cool 3D system for modeling how it will look. And then I use that model and and uh, dimensions to build one out of cardboard. So um, check it out. I have a real porta filter, and I, I was so into it. I actually made a tiny cappuccino cup. So uh, that's it. Um, again, you know, I know it looks kind of silly and stupid, but um, it definitely helps to mock stuff up before you buy something expensive because I was really worried about the height under the cabinets. Uh, so it, this is going to fit well, but let me show you the real espresso machine. So I've always wanted to do this. Three, two, one. Ta-da! There it is. There's the real thing. That's our espresso machine that we just got. Uh, it's an ECM Synchronica. Um, it is a very nice espresso machine. It's the first one we've ever had, and uh, we're going to be learning how to use it. Um, here's the deal. I've been working on our kitchen and, um, I've really done like all the work, um, everything except for drywall. I hired a drywall crew. Uh, they were amazing. So I definitely feel like I would definitely hire a drywall crew, but framing, building, building cabinets, painting, plumbing, electrical, stereo, rebuilding windows. I've done all that. So, um, usually what I try to do is I say, Hey, look, uh, Maybe I could get a couple of nice tools. So I invest a little bit of money in tools and I try to buy nice stuff and uh, it usually works out and I'm able to use it for a long time and enjoy working with it. So I really wanted an espresso machine. This is the one I got. It is amazing. I'm lucky to have it. And uh, with some of the money I saved from doing all the work on my kitchen myself, uh, I figured we had it in the budget. I will say I've gotten some quotes on doing work on our house, kitchen work and all that kind of stuff. And it, it's amazing how expensive uh, stuff can be. And uh, oftentimes I feel like I can do pretty close to the same quality of work, if not better, but I'm a little slower. So my wife is very kind. She puts up with it. So anyhow, I've actually plumbed it. Let's uh, watch it work here. So, in the rest of the video, I'm gonna show you how I plumbed it, how I ran the water from the uh, main water line through a BWT filter system into the coffee machine, then out of the coffee machine through a drain and down into the main drain line. So stay tuned, I'll show you all those parts and uh, here we go. Okay, so this are the feature or the plumbing parts that we're gonna to use to plumb this thing in. So if anybody's trying to do this at home, hopefully this helps you. Um, so starting at the espresso machine, uh, this came with the my espresso machine, which is an ECM Synchronica. This is the valve that uh, fits the bottom of their machine. That particular hose is five feet long. It ends up, and I'm not sure how common this is for European machines, but it ends up in a strange little ball valve at the end here. Um, so it's got this kind of funny looking ball valve. The company I bought the espresso machine from is called Whole Latte Love, and they sent included with their the machine this converter that goes from the ball valve to I think British Standard Thread, which is what the BWT uh, filtration system uses. So on one side we have a gasket, the other side we have this funny looking ball valve. This little thing has the cup to fit the ball valve, the socket I should say. And then that fits in there. And then you screw the other end in with the gasket compressing it. You gotta make sure the gasket's in there. And that makes that transition between the two types of um, uh, 
braided stainless steel uh, service lines. Then the other end of this fits nicely into the top of my uh, BWT uh, system. This is, so I'll, I'm running it backwards from the machine. This is the BWT aqua meter display. Um, it is a system to figure out how much has, how many uh, liters of water have flown through the filter. That way you could determine how much life is left in the filter. They say to replace these filters every year. I think you can go more off use because the filter, I don't think the media goes bad, but, uh, yeah, so basically this is a little display that lets you kind of track how much has been going through the canister. Then that fits down into the BWT Best Head Flex. This is the head that, that, that operates the canister. What's really cool about these is they have a selectable dosing amount. So that allows you to select how much water is being bypassed and how much is going through the, the canister. The reason you want to bypass some water is it's still being filtered for contaminants and impurities, but you're allowing the um, calcium to go through the filter. That makes the coffee taste better. If you use pure distilled water, I, I've been told the coffee doesn't taste very good. So if you had like an RODI system, even though that seems like it'd be better because it'd be pure water, apparently it won't taste very good. It would also, the water would actually possibly start leaching things out of the machinery, out of the metals in there, because the water is so pure, it's a perfect solvent. Any Anything that can will try to dissolve into the water. So it sounds weird, but you want to filter it, but not filter it too much. So there you go. Um, one of the nice things about this particular system is that there is a system to uh, be able to flush the canister built into here. And I also think it might be a good way to test the water. So I'm going to be testing the water just to make sure that I'm getting what I think out of the other end. And so this little hose is to just flush water through the canister. All right. And like I said, up on top, you can select it with these little dials. There's little numbers on there. I think you can see that. And it will allow you to adjust how much is going through. There's a one, two, or three setting for bypass. Then on the other side, we have the, uh, this is it. We have the BWT pressure reducer. Uh, and it's a three eighths to three eighths. Um, all this stuff is made in Austria. It looks really nice, high quality stuff. Uh, but this is the part that I'm using. This was all a kit and I got a little bit of a discount by buying it with the espresso machine as a kit. Uh, it shows you the pressure in bar. So it allows you to adjust uh, based off of that, how much pressure you're feeding into the canister and then how much you're feeding in the espresso machine. Typically, what I've heard is you want to feed about two to two and a half bar into the machine, uh, but I'll play around with that and do more research. But yeah, you can adjust it and you have a nice gauge showing you what the pressure is uh, coming into this system. And then there's another connection on this side. These uh, braided stainless steel lines that came with my BWT kit are each uh, four feet long and uh, they, the compression fitting fits right on here. I'll show you here. I don't want to cross thread it, trying to be careful. So that fits right on top of there. And then uh, finally, we have to connect it to the um, water mains or, or what we call the, you know, the cold water line. So this is what I'm using. It is a shark bite one half by one half by three eighths outside diameter uh, valve. So this is really easy. I can just take an existing copper line. It's a nice ball valve, no leaks here, not, not a gate valve. And uh, I'll just cut a section of the copper line out, put this in line, squish it back together, and I'll show you how we do that. And then uh, we'll be able to connect this piece right here, right onto it. So uh, this hook fits in here. Again, you wanna make sure you have a, uh, a gasket in there, a rubber uh, gasket and it screws in, and this is actually very easy for plumbing. It's not hard at all to put these in, but you, you have to be very careful. You have to mark the depth, clean the cut up on your pipe, and put it together. And I'm gonna show you guys that in the basement in a little bit here. So that's my water supply. Let's look at the drain. The drain was a little harder to figure out um, 
because the kit didn't come with anything. The only thing it comes with is this little, um, I don't know, kind of like catch basin that goes underneath the drip plate or the drip tray and catches the water out of the bottom of the drip tray when you remove the plug. Um, I don't know what dimension this is, but I went to the store and one half inside dimension, three quarter outside dimension, clear vinyl tubing fit it pretty well. So just fits over top. I had to work it in there a little bit. I don't want to break this off on camera, but you squish it in there. Um, I'm going to use a, a regular uh, stainless steel hose clamp on here to hold it down. And it's not under pressure. It's just, you just don't want it to leak. And then that, I like the fact that it's clear because I can see if it's working properly or if I'm getting coffee grounds getting stuck in it. So I kind of like that. Uh, this was 10 feet long. I probably won't need all 10 feet. And then on the other end, what I did, these are uh, PVC threaded collars that you would use for putting threaded half inch pipe in. Let me show you here. So you can see there's a, a thread on this and it's a, uh, this is one inch to three quarter and then I had a three quarter to half inch threaded piece. And it threads this little half inch pipe on pretty well. Um, so you thread that on there and then I went and got a traditional S trap. So this is just a regular siphon trap. Um, and what I found was with this little fitting, it'll fit nicely into the top of the S trap and then it will allow the S-trap to catch any sewer gas so it's not coming back up the pipe or making any issues. So just keeps the water up here. Water drips down here, goes to the S-trap, and then it goes into our actual, uh, uh, we're going to be running this through um, regular plumbing here. Okay, um, so this is uh, drilled a hole through the wood countertop that we're using until we get our permanent countertop in. And I used a two inch grommet. Um, this is a sort of grommet that you'd use for a computer, um, like a cable on a desk. And then I just went ahead after I put it in there, I sanded down the edge so it's smooth because this pipe is gonna sit kind of pushing down. I just don't want a sharp edge possibly abrading it. And then on the back of this, I pushed it through and I just put a clamp. So just one of these stainless steel style Post clamps, this one had a really thin uh, band and it seemed to work pretty well. And then I'm gonna put the espresso machine in and connect this, it should sit right about here, which should give it plenty of travel down into the grommet. I picked a little wider grommet so that it would have a little bit of curve. And then this will connect, the ruler obviously is just there to keep it from falling through. This will connect into the back where the espresso machine pulls water. So I'm gonna connect those two and then I'll show you what's going on in the basement. Okay, so there's the drain running right there, running straight down to that grommet you can see back there with the drain line. Let's go underneath. And uh, let's see if you can kind of see underneath there. So there's the uh, water supply and the electrical cord both running down to the grommet. And it looks like there's a good, a good nice uh, slope going away from that drain. What, another nice thing is these feet can be moved up and down, so you could, you could tip it back a little more if you wanted to, uh, but that looks okay. All right, I'm just putting together the, uh, the BWT uh, Best Head Flex pump, and I've got this little water meter here. Um, what I did is I just cut out all this crazy amount of wire, and I just cut it down to a little shorter piece. Um, that's how the connectors go. I just tinned them a little bit with the soldering iron. By the way, if you guys are looking for a soldering iron, the Paco FX888D is like amazing. Um, so I tinned them, put them in here, reconnected them, and then I'm probably going to just mount it so it's opposite of this gauge on this side. So uh, put this together and finally go down to the basement and start installing this. Okay, uh, down here in the basement, I'm putting in the uh, ABS pipe uh, that needed to be added in there. So what I ended up doing is I, I've got my uh, sink drain here and I cut it um, off there, cut it on this side, installed this little section up. This is two inch pipe, one and a half inch pipe, a collar, P-trap, and then that's gonna go up for the drain. 
and then I just picked the line up and brought it back to where it needed to go. Um, when you're doing this, make sure you keep a good slope. Uh, that way you don't end up flat if you end up cutting the pipe because then you'll just gather water in there. And, uh, you know, obviously when you connect, it's better to pull it in the direction you want the uh, drain to go. So I'm going to glue all this up and uh, then we're going to start bringing down the, uh, the rest of the pieces. W one quick thing, I put the drain on first. I'm going to put the water um, feed above it. Another basic plumbing thing, put the drain underneath where you want to get drinking water. <laughs> you don't want the drain ever dripping down onto your drinking water source, right? So try to keep them separated by gravity and that will keep bacteria and all kinds of other things from getting in your drinking water. All right, we'll keep going here. Okay, so I've got the pipe in. Um, get ready to anchor this into the wall. And I've got these little brackets. So I put these brackets on here. Um, so this pipe stays a little more firm. Uh, tool of the day, I guess, is this BHC 18 from Festool. I got this thing. Uh, there was a big sale. They were like 25% off last year because I think they were getting rid of them. But it's a hammer drill. Uh, it uses these really nice little uh, bit system. It's not like a regular chuck. So let's use it to uh, screw in this piece. So it's back in there. Again, this is battery driven, so. So, pretty darn fast. I'm super impressed with this tool. So, we'll pop on the, uh, the bracket here. Uh, before we do that, let's grab a couple of wall anchors. Put these little guys in there. There we go, there's one. And two guy up there and uh, I, I like to use just regular screws uh, that have the hex or the uh, t-bits on there there we go now it's got dust on it that's good because uh, looks like it's always been like that nobody will be the wiser, we just did redid the plumbing. Okay, so here we are at the P-trap. Uh, I'm gonna be cutting down this little, uh, this is a main USA, one half inside diameter, three quarter outside diameter vinyl tube. And what I've got here is a one half to three quarter fitting with the screw on there or for the thread. And then I've got um, three quarter to one inch piece kind of put together fits pretty well on here. So I think I'm just going to go to about here. Again, tools, love tools. This is a Kipix 90, 20, 185 uh, cutter. I use this a lot for pecs. Only thing I don't like about it is the blade gets a little tarnished, but it, it works really well to cut a nice straight piece of pipe. So we'll just hold it here. There we go. Guess you could use it also to take the end off the cigar. And we'll just thread this in here. Now I do have vent. Uh, I have a vent on this line just prior to this, so I don't need to vent this piece. Um, but obviously if you're plumbing, always think about where your vents are. And I'm just gonna thread this in here a little bit. That's threading in there nicely. Um, so yeah, definitely, definitely kind of think about how you're gonna vent the uh, the tubing and do that. Okay. Um, again, not a licensed plumber. Just how I'm doing it. Uh, to plumb in for my cold water, uh, first make darn sure you know which one is the cold water. Um, it's not always clear when you're upside down in the basement. I'm going to be using the shark bite fitting. Um, the one that we were talking about, it's half inch, half inch. I just marked approximately how much material I need to remove. And then what I use is this uh, auto cut. This thing is awesome. It's actually made in England. It's very, very helpful. It uses almost no space. Uh, you put it on here, you twist it the right direction. It cuts the pipe perfectly on both sides there. Then I'm gonna go in with this tool. This is a shark bite uh, tool that marks the depth that uh, you need to get the pipe pushed in. 
so that you have a correct fitting. So I'll mark those positions and make sure I reach those when I push the pipe together. It also has a little deburring tool. And then finally I hit it with a little bit of like this sandpaper emery cloth. The biggest thing with these shark bite fittings is you do not want a sharp burr on the pipe when you put it back together because there's an O-ring on the end on the inside of the shark bites and it will nick that O-ring and possibly cause the joint to fail. So I love the shark bite stuff. Um, this is a pretty good spot. And uh, so we're gonna install that and then I'll show you how it looks. Okay, I got everything plumbed together. Um, this is the BWT um, filter. You can see back there, it's obviously anchored in the wall. Uh, nice thing about these is they tip forward. So if you wanna change the canister, let you tip it forward. I was originally planning to plumb it to the sides. And like I said, this fitting, they don't include the straight one. So a little bit of misleading thing on their YouTube channel, but actually this worked out really well because I like the way it looks coming straight down. Plus when you tip it forward, it keeps everything kind of in line. Flexible hose looks good. Um, this little guy, I ended up, like I said, cutting it much shorter. And then I, I just hot glued it to it because it's not that hard to pop off if I ever need to replace a battery. Uh, and I like it here. I don't like it on the wall. I don't know why, but I like to have both gauges kind of off the wall where they're not getting humid and wet, all that kind of stuff. There's the, uh, there's the pressure system. The way this pressure system works is you, pressure regulator, you pop it out, then you turn it, and then you pop it back in. But since I've got it set correctly, I don't really want to do that. So I'm, I'm pulling a little over two bars when it's running and two bars exactly um, when the pressure is uh, running. Well, actually, I'm maybe a little high. I probably should be bringing this back to about two bar when it's running, which it is right now. So we're gonna go look at that in a second. And then uh, here's my hoses. And then there's my shark bite fitting right there. And you can even see my little uh, my little lines. That's demarcate, uh, that's to tell me how far I need to push them in. The lines are actually gonna be visible, so. It's pushed in enough, I promise. Shut off valve right here in case things get really uh, bad. You can shut it off here, open it back up. And there's the thing, runs up. Um, again, on this fitting, I wish I could take it off, but it's that ball fitting. There is no gasket. There is no need to put any kind of silicone or, or Teflon or anything in there. Um, it's just kind of cool. It's like a little ball valve that basically is a compression fitting. So. I guess it's a European thing. I've never seen it, used it. Um, not that I don't trust it because <laughs> I put it at the lowest point in the train line. So if it leaks, hopefully it leaks all over this area, which is kind of a shame because I've got a cool World War II uh, thing down here that get wet, but you know, it looks it looks pretty cool. So I think it'll, I think it'll be okay. And then I've got my drain working. So I've got the, uh, I haven't actually filled the boiler yet. I guess I have incidentally, but I haven't turned the machine on. I'm gonna run through the process for turning the machine on. This is just system pressure running down through the group head and we'll go take a look at it. And then runs down into here. I ended up putting a little bit of tape on this to make it just a teeny bit bigger so it pops right in here. Um, and then I put a bracket on the top and bottom here so there's no chance that this gets pulled out. And you can see it flowing water. So that's our little system. Runs down there into the P-trap and then joins up with the prim uh, primary drain from the kitchen here. All right, um, let's go upstairs, take a look at the uh, espresso machine and... All right, we're up here at the ECM, espresso coffee machine. Um, obviously I've got pressure on the line now and I've been running, I don't know, quite a bit of water through so far, probably about 20 minutes, 30 minutes worth of water, just making sure that we have no leaks prior to getting ready to turn the pump on. Um, there is the pressure on the inlet at two, uh, two bars of pressure. Um, if you push down, shuts it off. And then as you bring it up a little bit, I think they call this pre-infusion where the pump is not on, but the line pressure is available to the group head. And then you, uh, you are pre-infusing the coffee or pre-wetting it and then you bring it up a little higher and that's where the pump would be on. I don't have the pump plugged in. I have to figure out how to prep the boiler and make sure that it's plenty of water and kind of run through that procedure, which I think I kind of have by running water through the system, but 
I'm going to read the manual, make sure I know what I'm doing before I actually plug this thing in. And uh, then it's dripping down. This is my fancy schmancy water um, non-distribution tool. Keeps the water coming down into the uh, into the drip tray, so I don't have a big mess running down to the drip tray. Looks really good so far. I no no leaks. We're gonna go take a look at that. So let me pop this off, and we'll go to see. So let's go take a look underneath. Looks like I don't see any puddles of water after about 20 minutes of running. There you can see the light around here. You can see the water flowing through. No problem, it looks like it has a pretty nice angle. There is the water line on the back, no issues. Uh, no water issues. Looks like the, the position of the hole is pretty good. Um, I'd say that hole is about, I don't know. Let me get a, let me get a, uh, a ruler, give me two seconds. That hole, from the very front of the machine is about seven inches back. So uh, I guess to the middle, we're probably about eight inches or so. So that's where I am. If you look down at here, looks like I'm maybe eight and a half to get to that hole. I think that helps having it back a little like that because um, it gives it enough to tip it back and get water flowing down the machine. And you don't want a high point right there. And then uh, obviously the braided line that they provide is perfect because that thing's really thin. So I really like that braided line that they gave you. Um, it's perfect. There's that another one of those ball joints. It works great. So um, when you get the machine, obviously there's a screw under here that you have to remove to let the pump um, not be locked in. Then there's a, a valve. Okay, there's a valve back here that needs to be positioned out towards me, I guess. Um, and that allows line pressure to be the source of water. And then I can't show you right now, but inside there, there's a little switch that I think it turns off the water sensor. It's basically what it's doing. And it'll allow the machine to run because otherwise the reservoir is empty and probably always will be. So that would trigger the system to not want to run. So... There we go. ECM Synchronica plumbed. Uh, if you see anything I did wrong, please let me know in the comments. I'm sure coffee aficionados will do that anyways. And uh, we'll go from there. So thanks so much. I hope this helps somebody. Like I said, I was putting this in. I had lots of questions and I, I figured I'd share how I did it. Good, bad, or, or other. Um, at least I've given you guys what I've done. And maybe in the comments, if I made any, any mistakes, please correct me. So thanks so much. Have a great day. Enjoy your coffee.